If you're struggling with using a continental grip, and so many pros are telling you, I need to use a continental grip, this is the video you need to watch. Because I'm gonna show you how to find your continental grip, and I'm gonna also show you how to use the continental grip, especially if you're switching from the pancaker or the waiter trayer, whatever you call it. But this is so essential because once you start learning how to use your grip the right way and how to make it function and work for you, it adds so many extra elements to your game, meaning that you can hit more spin, you can hit more power with control, and you can have more consistency on your serve. So let's get started. First of all, let's talk about continental grip. What it is and why it's so important. Why do the pros keep, or your local pro, keep bugging you about it? Or maybe you don't even know that you're supposed to be using it, and you're wondering, how are you looking down the court and you see that person just blasting serves, and they probably have a continental grip. So what the continental grip really is, is a way to leverage your racket the right way. And so the first mistake that I think we all can make and it's super easy is to think like, okay, I want the ball to go that way, right? So it makes sense to have the strings go that way and I hit it. In the beginning, totally fine. You're gonna get balls in, you're gonna play, you're gonna have fun. But as you get better, you start seeing something different. You start seeing players do bigger motions and their rackets creating a lot of racket at speed. And so what they're doing now is they're using a continental grip. And the difference is now, you were leveraging this way maybe before, but with a continental grip, you're leveraging this way, okay? So you still have that same leverage, meaning that you still have the pulling leverage, but we're leveraging or facing a racket a different direction. And you're going, how does that work? Because if I do that, I'm gonna hit the frame. Now, here's the difference. When you're leveraging the racket this way, you can't create any real true spin. And what I mean by spin, you can kind of come under it, you can't really go over it, and you, it's really hard to, I'll try it, to go sideways on it, not gonna work. That's really tough on my wrist. So the power of the continental grip is, by doing this, now instead of, and this is the difference we'll talk about, is instead of swinging through the court this way, so direct, I start swinging this way, across my body. And so what that does is now, I have the ability to have that same leverage that I was creating here, but now I have the ability to add spin. You have kind of two dimensions of this, where dimension, or the first one with the pancake or grip is you have one dimension, you have direction. But with a continental grip, you have two dimensions because you have direction, but now you also have spin, okay? Ball went in that, I'll have to fix that. You have spin, there you go, so like that. I miss my first one, I just add more spin on the second one. Compared to you miss your first one, well, you have to hit it softer. I can actually hit my second serve and go after it more aggressively because I have two dimensions created by the continental grip. So let's talk about what is the continental grip, like how do you find it? Well, I personally like ways of finding things that probably are weird to a lot of people, but I'll share them with you. So what that means is, uh, hold your racket up, head height, and grab the racket. And what I'm looking at is for my wrist to be nice and flat. This is one way I like finding it. Another way is you'll hear coaches, excuse my grip, it's a little old, but you'll have a flat and a flat and a flat. And you have the part of your hand where you're here and here. And what you're gonna do is take this one and line it up on the second flat, okay? And you see how my knuckles are coming across. So this bottom half is on one, two, three. So the bottom half is on three and the top is on two, going to the right side. Another way is chopper grip. Um, trying to think of any other ways. But the key is making sure that you have the leverage of instead of going this way, that you turn the racket here and you take the racket edge and go this way at a 45 degree angle. So it's like a chopping. If you've ever went ax throwing, some places have that. But ax throwing this way, it's the exact same thing. And so this is the benefits of the continental grip. And with this continental grip and this new swing path becomes the confusion. This is what kills everybody in the beginning because they're like, okay, I just switched to a continental grip. So if you got the grip, great. And then you're like, okay, I gotta do the motion, but then I swing through it. Oh shoot, the ball went that way. Okay, so if that happens, it's because you're swinging direct in the court, you don't wanna do that. So now we're gonna talk about the big confusing thing. When you start going to a continental grip, is that you have to understand this. The racket face sends it and the path bends it. So what that means is the racket face sends it. You probably already understand that if you're coming from this, because you're like, strings or racket face needs to look in this direction, because that's where I want the ball. So now I go to a continental grip, it's really hard to get my racket face to look in that, ball, that direction. And for this, we have to go to the path. The path can also help us with the racket face. And what I mean by that is if I change my path, this is the first path where you see my racket face looking to the side, but if 
I change my path slightly and come a little bit more from left to right, look what it does. It assists me in helping the racket start to look towards the direction of the court. The other assist is what we call pronation, which is turning the racket this way. So if we have the racket path and we have pronation, we now have the ability to look at the court. Another added benefit of pronation is it adds or helps to add more speed. Now, it doesn't directly add more speed because you're pronating with your forearm. That actually happens because you're sending energy up through the ground, through your hips, through your legs, to your shoulders, and all that energy is now thrusted forward. And also, by pronating, it helps us do the finish, which dissipates a lot of that energy. It's complicated, but we don't need to go there. But the biggest thing is pronation by turning and having a different racket face will now help us get the ball in the court and help us achieve a little bit more pace. So what I mean by this is if I do what I did before, the ball's gonna go that way. But if I change the racket uh, path without pronating, the ball's gonna go that way. Now, if I start pronating a little bit more, what you're gonna find is this. The ball starts going this way because at contact, my racket face was looking in that direction, but my path was going this way. And this is the key uh, to using the script because now you have the second dimension is now you're able to hit with more spin and create the racket face that you want which you can start leveling up and hitting more power on your serve. So let's get into some drills to transition you from maybe going from this way to this way because this is the mother. I mean this is the absolute mother is just getting the swing path and then I'll show you how to get the entire swing. So the very first drill I want you to do is this. First of all, make sure you have a continental grip. Really important, we got that continental grip. And all I want you to do is do this like hammering action, okay? And what I'm doing really is I'm pulling down, okay, from here, pulling down from here. So I'm gonna have this hammering action. One key that I think a lot of times when I do this drill, players start to go like this, okay? We don't need all that. We just want it to go right here. So I want you to take a ball and take it just like this. Now, we're gonna pronate a tiny bit, just that much and I want you to have that same pulling leverage action. Now here's the difference. I'm not pushing, I'm pulling, okay? This is pushing, push. I push the ball down and to push it, a lot of times I start doing this. This is pulling, I'm pulling the ball down. There's different muscles being activated. I Meaning I'm pulling versus pushing. I wanna be pulling. There's more leverage in me pulling. And since the rack of face with slightly pronating is like this, this is hugely important. And what you're gonna find is you hear the ball being brushed, okay? It's being brushed, okay, good. A couple more times, being brushed. And what you'll also notice is the ball's not doing anything weird like it's going way to the side. If I'm coming straight down, okay, it goes slightly to the side, but not much, but a lot of the spin is going to the side and the spin kind of brings it back. So that's the keys you're looking for. And notice how I'm not going way out here. Now what I wanna do is add more pronation to this, okay? So I'm gonna go from here. And all I'm gonna do is you notice how as I swung, my racket continues to pronate where the head starts to look down. It's not gonna go past here again, so it's gonna look like this. And if you're having trouble with this, try it without the ball. So you go like this a couple times. And so I'm adding two dimensions here. I'm not only pulling down, but I'm pulling down and turning my forearm, okay? Turning my forearm and so I can get the racket fairly flat. If it's not, it doesn't have to be completely flat, but as long as it's here, it's good. So I'm going here, and you should still almost get the same effect. If you get where it starts doing that, well, you make contact too early and you didn't brush and move forward. So we're trying to brush and get the racket to go down. Now, to be honest, the, rack, the ball's only gonna stay on the strings for like a fraction of a second. So there's not this feeling, it feels like you're going, ooh, and it's staying on there, but it's already gone. We just wanna have that brushing feeling. So it goes here and here, here and here. So we're now pronating. We went from just kind of a straight push to pronate and here. And from here, the next drill is we're gonna to toss it higher and start the racket off higher. So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna still pull. And be careful. <laughs> Quick story, I had a, a student doing this once and he had his racket here, did this and did it really hard and the ball went boop, took his hat off. Because since we're starting to add this, we're starting to get a lot more power. We're starting to leverage the racket and the racket head is moving faster with the pronation. So again, we wanna start here, have the racket higher. Okay, ball might go away from you a little bit. That's totally fine. Okay, okay, good. A little higher, toss it a little higher and go over this a little bit. I'm tossing it up and I'll let it come down in here. Again, rack it high, toss it up, let it bounce. So it's gonna bounce, okay? And I'm pulling it down and pronating. Now from here, this is where we make this transition. 
You notice how we've been working on this action here, it's getting higher, and now I'm gonna take my racket, and I'm gonna take my racket from this starting position, and just to be clear, the court's this way, baseline's this way, I've been doing all this at about a 45 degree angle. If you haven't, no problem. This is the time to do it at a 45 degree angle here. So we did it this way. And all I'm gonna do, oh, I gotta toss a little higher. All I'm gonna do from here after doing those, oop, didn't pronate on that one. There we go. All I'm gonna do from here is take my racket. I'm gonna take it and point it straight down, okay? So it's pointing straight down here. And all I'm gonna do now is pull my racket up and pronate and keep it on the right side. So it goes from here straight down here. Now, this is the key to this. You're going to need to make sure when you're facing the court, my toe is facing towards the net post, my body's facing sideways, and I'm swinging and pulling at a 45 degree angle. This is the baseline, uh, this is kind of 90 degrees, so this is exactly in the middle going here, and I'm pronating. So, what I want you to do is get the racket, I'm not scratching my back, I'm just pulling the racket down here, and I want you to toss it and do that. Now, keys to doing this. I'm pulling the racket in this direction and the racket head's gonna come down here. So you see how it's flat. So I'm going this angle and the racket comes flat. This is exactly what we've been doing here. We're just now extending it out and here. So you have this L, semi L-like shape here going this way. And so what we wanna do is toss the ball where we make contact over our hitting arm shoulder and then do the exact same swing. So I'm pushing where the butt of the racket's facing up. I'm gonna pull, okay? And you can see how my racket's flatter. Now, the key is making sure you keep this on your right side, okay? So I'm gonna pull, okay? Keep it on my right side, and I'm really starting to pronate a little bit more. Okay, pull, right side, up, okay? Pull, right side, and what I'm adjusting a little bit is the racket face if it goes too uh, low or too open, which really don't want you focusing on right now. Just get used to pulling and getting sure that you're getting here. So these are the key check marks we wanna make. Is it going from here? Pull, pronate here. As long as you get to here, you're good. So pull, okay, look where my racket is. Pull. Now, one mistake a lot of players make when they start doing this is they almost pull straight and they pull down. So it looks like this, okay? You see how my arm went? Compared to pulling, and you can almost even let your elbow bend a little bit. So it's pulling here and then here to keep your elbow up instead of pulling your elbow down. So this is incorrect. Pull. This is correct, keeping the elbow up at the end. See where my elbow is. And I'm still getting spin because I'm pronating and the racket's traveling this way. So this is really key. Take your time with this area right here. And now what this can happen, or what this can turn into, is now holding the racket up, okay? And then we're dropping it where it's pulling down. So now we're creating a little momentum. So you can go here, down, Okay, here, down, okay. Oh, bad toss, don't throw it, or don't hit it. Here, down. Now notice how I'm finishing still on my right side. And you can see where this is slowly going. And if you do it and take your time, it's not really hard, it's just retraining and making sure that you do the right thing at the right time, meaning keeping that elbow up nice and high, right here. I'm not saying up here, you've seen players like that, but just keeping it probably like shoulder width or shoulder height. and staying on the right side. Another big mistake players start to make is we see the finish, okay? And what that means is we start doing this action compared to staying here and at the very end we come around, okay? So now you're really seeing how to use the continental grip. Now, the last thing is that the racket face. If you hit the ball in the net, your racket face may be too close. Open it with the, the angle of your wrist. If you want to hit the ball higher, open it. So if I open it, I'll start again, just having the racket down. If I open it, ball goes really high. If I close it, ball goes really low. That's how I adjust how high and how low the ball may go, okay? And so from here now, you can start working with the racket nice and high. You're gonna just drop the racket where it's facing up. Now, in this position facing up, it almost makes kind of like a, I wanna say a triple right angle. Sounds crazy, but you got this right angle here and you have this right angle, okay? We don't want it bent in here, okay? Because if it's bent in here, it's gonna be really hard to face it up. You can kind of bend this out. But if I have it here and I'm able to go here, boom, I'm there. Now, you may also feel like that's super tight, Kevin. I, I can't really go that far. Just do your best to try to keep this right angle. Even if I have it here, which now it's facing there, 
I can go and still hit it. Now, this is the start. If you can do this, this is a huge advantage to your game because now you have the ability to understand how to use the continental grip. And notice I'm still starting or staying on the right side. If I wanna do more, I can say boom, and then at the end it comes here. But make sure you don't turn into the court too early, okay? Really important. So I hope this video serves you. I think it's really crucial. If you wanna transition from hitting serves like this to learning how to use the continental grip the right way, these are the drills to do it. This is so simple, but it does take practice, so make sure you go out and do it.